Welcome to FootballGamePlan.com, where football makes sense. I'm Emory Hunt, the czar of the playbook. Joined with another session of Talking with the Czar, here with head coach Bob Sarice, Princeton University. Thanks, Thanks for having me. Appreciate you having me here. Now, now Coach Sarice, you played here, you coached here, your wife, Lisa, was a tremendous athlete here. Do players feed off that when they see you out on the field and when you go out recruiting? Yeah, well, I, I do think it helps. You know, and I think some ways it helps that I tell the guys, the, the game plan doesn't always have to be in life that you graduate from Princeton, you go to Wall Street, do what you love. And hopefully you can be successful at it. Um, hopefully we've given you the guidance, advice, all the template that you can go out and, and if you love coaching football, if you love law, if you love the business world, whatever that is, go and do what you love. And then if you can do it at a place where you had the greatest experience. And I, I think a lot of times in college recruiting, and we were both recruited a long time ago, the smart kids can smell what a phony is, a guy who's just there for himself and not somebody who's there for them. And, and I hope the kids see that comes through that, yes, that we're there. And, you know, I remember we just went through an athletic director search mm -hmm. and, and just is being part of that and being part of Princeton Athletics during that. One of the things they said, it's, you know, your calling. And I just read about our ex, uh, our outgoing athletic director, and he said, you know, he came back here, it was a calling. I'm not saying, you know, per se it's a calling, but yeah, this is where I wanted to be, and when I would write my list of things I wanted to do, you know, not, not per se a bucket list, but career-wise, when I went into coaching and, I, and having played here and the great experience I had here, it was to give back. It's a way that hopefully I can give back to 30 seniors every year and send them out with a great football experience, a great college experience, and then they go to their careers, whether it's the Detroit Lions or Kansas City Chiefs, or it's Barclays, that they go out and they've you know grown from that experience. Now, do you find that gives you an advantage when you're talking to, to the kids? Do they see like, okay, being from here, coach here, play here, that experience, I can I can see yeah. him relating to that. Well, I think there's an authenticity. Mm -hmm. You know, it's authentic that I did, I experienced it. So whether it's something that I can help them with in a career way, in an academic support way, they do something where they, you know, get in a little trouble. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I've been through it all, you, you know, here at Princeton, and I have such faith and trust that we have an unbelievable president, an unbelievable administration, unbelievable athlete, athletic administration. And as a coach, you know, it's good to have knowledge of the jobs that you're interviewing for. So I followed Princeton since 1985 when I was being recruited. So I know that we've had such a strong athletic department and we have such strong leaders. And, you know, so for me to go and meet with a dean, meet with admissions, meet with financial aid, meet with the people up campus, you know, I think you go in there and you can have great conversations and discussions on how to make Princeton go from being where we are and even get better than that. 1869, Coach. Big tradition. I'm big on tradition. First football game between Rutgers and Princeton. How big is tradition in today's game and future success for the Tigers? I, I think it's, you know, and I think anybody in our professions, mm -hmm. you know, growing up, my dad was a high school football coach, and the first thing he did was read the newspaper. And every morning, you know, he would get every paper, cut out the articles. So I've grown up with just loving whether it was professional football, college football, but just absorbing myself into those traditions. So when I was here, you know, it was amazing to get to meet Dick Kazmaier or shake the hand of Cosmo Yakovazi. Mm -hmm. And now, you know, with Cosmo, the 1964 team was undefeated 50 years ago. And we're gonna celebrate that this year. And I get to join in on their celebrations and help them with their events. And, you know, it was great. I was number 64 and it was kind of a coincidence. I don't think <laughs> when I was a freshman, they thought I'd be any good and they gave me that number. But, you know, it's kind of neat to see, you know, so much of, you know, those traditions and be a part of that. They just did a, a big uh, uh, TV interview on Kobe Baker mm -hmm. and, and the great, the only college football and hockey Hall of Famer. You know, so being a part of that and to play the first game, to have the most national titles, we have 20 national titles, to have all those things, that, that I think that resonates with, with, with players. I don't think that's the only reason. If we were a lousy academic school, mm -hmm. they wouldn't be attracted to us. But when you combine the best school in the country, the school's ranked number one, you combine, you know, the fact that we have a great deal of football tradition. And then to be able to come in here, and when I came here in 1986, 
we had had a 16 year period where we hadn't won an Ivy League title. So to win an Ivy League title four years later, my senior year, and then to see teams right after that win, you know, four titles in a really mm -hmm. short span, you know, for us to win my fourth year here as a coach, hopefully we can sustain that like they did when I was here uh, as a player, because that's important. You were an all Ivy center and your offensive lines are consistently good. And is that something you take more seriously when you coach and recruit? I, I think in my background, having played offensive line and then coached offensive line and then worked with the offensive linemen at the NFL level, mm -hmm. you know, I think that's attractive to offensive line recruits. Um, you know, James Perry's our offensive coordinator. He holds, still holds Ivy League records as a quarterback. And he always laughs that most important recruit is the center, Princeton. <laughs> and I kind of, you know, follow it up with, well, you can't have a play without the center. So it is a pretty important position. Right. But you, you know, when you, you know, when you go from being when I was the offensive line coach, that was where you funneled all your energy, attention. That's all you had blinders on, and that's all your focus. You know, when we did the draft. You, you know, when we picked a cornerback, I wasn't part of that discussion. Mm -hmm. You know, I was part of the offensive line discussions in the NFL draft. Now that you're the head coach, you got to see the big picture. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I do think the fact that the experiences that we've had and the way we've developed players, I, I think that that's what you look at. And, you, you know, I love the offensive linemen, but I also love cornerbacks who can lock down receivers. Mm -hmm. I love quarterbacks who, you know, complete 29 straight passes. I mean, so those type things, you know, believe me, every every position when you become the head coach is equally important and, you know, their development as football players, their development is, you know, people and seeing them, it's all the same that way. But yeah, I, I think when you're an offensive lineman and you see a background, you know, you immediately know that, you know, that position, probably the hardest be, the offensive line coach probably has the hardest job because <laughs> he's probably thinking, you know, what is, but we work, I mean, Ed Morrissey is as good as it gets. And, you know, we've gone from not having an all Ivy League player in, I don't know, it's like a dozen years to having two first team all Ivy League players, um, all ECAC, you know, type guys, a guy that'll probably be a preseason All American next year. So I think we, we've done a good job. Uh, you know, making that, that position relevant again in terms of helping us be successful. I'm glad you mentioned the Bengals. That segues into my next question, Coach. You, you've coached there eight years. It was eight years with the Bengals. Um, how has that experience helped you here at Princeton? I didn't have to change colors. I had a lot of, I had a lot of orange and black. Um, no, uh, uh, I just, you know, they say getting to the NFL, that's getting your PhD in coaching mm -hmm. because that's all you do. And if you're a people person and you're authentic and you're not a phony and don't lie, you, know, you can recruit. You know, mom and dad and young man and high school coach, they, they want people that are authentic and I think that part you can do. But the X and O part, the NFL is the cream of the crop and you know, that's why some guys don't last very long in there and you know, you see them go right back to college because they think it's easier or whatever else. It is a really tough deal when you, every week you're going up against, I remember I got the question, how are you going to do these Ivy League coaches are great. Are you nervous about, you know, competing against them? I'm like, we had to go against Dick LeBeau and, and, and Rex Ryan, mm -hmm. and, you know, Mike Zimmer every day in practice. Right. So, you know, you don't look at it as me versus the other Ivy League head coach because you've already experienced that in the NFL. Where, where I think the NFL helps being, you know, working with, we had assistant coaches, Leslie Frazier, Hugh Jackson, Mike Zimmer, now an mm -hmm. NFL head coach. So I work with a number of guys. Paul Alexander every day is as good as it gets. I mean, he's one of the all time great NFL assistant coaches. Jim Anderson, one of the all time great running back coaches in the NFL. But Marvin Lewis, you, you don't get better than that. Mm -hmm. And every day realizing this is how I'm ever head coach again how you want to run an organization, how you want to run a program, developing guys. But but Marvin could go, we'd be in a restaurant with a, with a free agent and he'd see somebody having a birthday party and go over and shake their hand. He was such a people person and he was such somebody that you felt comfortable about. He made my family feel part of the Bengal family and, and that's what you want to do as a head coach. That's what I want to do as a head coach. Mm -hmm. I want our assistant coaches, our support staff, our players to feel part of a family. And it takes time to build that and build that culture. And in the NFL, sometimes you don't have that time. And people take shortcuts. Marvin never took shortcuts. 
And, and to this day, when I walk into Cincinnati, I walk in their offices, and because of all the security, they make you wear name tags, he still rips it off and says, you, you're not a guest, you're part of our family. And he just makes you feel great. He makes everybody in that organization, from the guy who's you know taking care of his trash, to the guy who's selling tickets, he makes the marketing, everybody feel like we're part of a special organization. And it's why coming to Princeton, where we have a lot of academic restrictions. I mean, there's teams who have 88 guys in an academic area mm -hmm. where the league says we only get eight. Well, the Bengals are a small market team. So you're dealing with restrictions. And instead of making excuses, you do your best to find ways to be successful. And you learn from him how he did that and how he did that as a true professional and turning that organization into people that are just true professionals along with, you know, it was a pleasure to work with Mike Brown and, and, and the, mm -hmm. his family that own the team. Check out part two of my interview with Princeton head football coach Bob Sarace on our website, footballgameplan.com slash FBGPU.